Welcome back to episode 4 of how to make a tactical shooter game in Unreal Engine. In the last episode, we set up our movement and camera inputs so we could move the character around and also move our camera around. In this one today, we're going to be adding some animations and a simple locomotion system to our character so the character moves around with some smooth animations. So let's not waste any more time and let's get started. Okay, so in the previous episodes, I was really not happy with some of the animations. They were deforming the character and they weren't good for this tutorial series, especially if you're a beginner starting to learn this kind of stuff. So what I've done ahead of time is I've probably saved you a massive headache. I've been working in the background and what I've done, I've got this character in the background from Mixmo and I've got a load of animations that I'm going to give away for free. So if you want these animations and this character, just go to the Patreon, which is also free to sign up to and download the animation pack and then we can actually get started. So what I will do is I will skip ahead and I will show you how to import all the animations from the free animation pack and then we'll start setting up our eight way locomotion system. So this is what the folder looks like with all the animations. We have jog forward, backwards, strafe left, strafe right, uh, forward left, forward right, back right and back left. And also an idle animation. And then the character we're going to use to retarget. You don't really need to remember this unless you're going to import your own animations, but I just thought I would leave this in there. So with our project open, I've just opened the content browser and I'm going to drag in our character just the character, not the animations. And then we're gonna reset the pipeline defaults just like this, and our character should import just like this. Then let's right click, make a new folder and rename it Mixmo, or Mixmo underscore character, that'll do. We're gonna select everything and drag it into this folder here, just to keep all our assets in one place. Like I said, we're not gonna be using this uh, character, but we need it for retargeting all the animations. Then we're going to drag in all the animations and select the Mixamo skeleton like this. Don't, re don't <laughs> like, please don't select any other skeleton because it'll completely deform the animations. <laughs> and uh, trust me, I've done it loads of times myself. Right, okay, so we have all of our animations and what we're going to be doing is retargeting all these animations to our metahuman skeleton. So to do this, we're going to select all of the animations here, just like this, and right click and click retarget animations. The source skeleton mesh is going to be Mixamo and the target skeleton mesh will be the, I think for me it is, where is it? It's Ralphie body, that one. For you, it will be like shooter character body or whatever you renamed your body in the earlier episode. Now, let's just make a new folder inside of main character. I'm going to rename it animations, and then we're going to give it a prefix of mh underscore, just so it's easier to search when we actually go into the animation graph. Okay, so let's export all these animations here, and click export, export again, and now we have all these animations from Mixamo retargeted onto our metahuman skeleton. Let's click save all and begin setting up our animation blueprint. So we're gonna go into the characters folder, main character, and in our shooter character, we can actually see that if we click on BB shooter character and go to the right, Ralphie body is there, that's what we retarget to. And in animation blueprint, we have nothing there. So let's create one. So I right click and we are going to create an animation blueprint and it is going to be the metahuman base skeleton this one here click create and then rename it abp underscore um let's do no actually let's actually change that to shooter so we're going to do abp underscore shooter just like this sweet let's open this up and this is how it works so if we get our mh idle and we plug it into the output pose then that will play that animation by default. As you can see, the skeleton has snapped into place, but if we go back to our character, we haven't actually assigned a animation blueprint. So we're still in the T-pose. All we need to do is come to this dropdown and search for the ABP shooter, the animation blueprint we just created. And we can see we snap into that pose. Now, if I just dock this here and we add our running animation and click compile, as you can see, we start running but then we pause 
and obviously we don't want that so what we actually have to do is select looping in all of these i just want to show you that if you ever get that error so let's begin we're going to search for state and we need to get a state machine i'm going to rename this something quite long unarmed locomotion strafing like this we can start adding some states inside our state machine so let's no actually let's just actually create a new state first and this one's going to be idle um idle unarmed let's do that and then we're going to plug this into the entry like that if we click compile we'll go back into the t-pose but we can actually add our idle animation inside here like that now when we compile it'll play the animation but we actually get that looping problem so all we have to do is click on the animation and select loop and now this will loop indefinitely and our character is doing everything that we've just set up in our animation blueprint okay so we need a new state we don't just want to stay in idle all the time so let's create a new state and this one is going to be unarmed strafing locomotion so add state unarmed st da -da -da -da. yeah unarmed strafing locomotion that'll do and then we're going to drag a back arrow just to here so we can transfer from idle unarmed into our unarmed strafing locomotion now if we open this up we don't just want to add one animation here we actually want to add a blend space so let's create one if we go and right click go to animation and go to animation no go to blend space we can select the metahuman skeleton and rename this bs underscore unarmed strafing now we can drag in our bs unarmed strafing into the event graph and plug it into the output pose and basically the reason we're using this is because we can blend multiple animations depending on the speed and direction which we're going to set up right now so for the name we're going to do direction and then it's going to be minus 180 for the minimum 180 for the max and grid divisions is going to be eight snap to grid is going to be on and the smoothing time is going to be 0.5 then it's going to be speed for the next name the minimum is going to be zero and the maximum is going to be 150 for now we'll change that later grid divisions four snap to grid and the smoothing time is going to be 0.5 just like this now we have everything set up we can actually start adding in our animations so if we go to the asset browser on the right hand side and search for mh this will bring up all the animations that we retargeted before now what we need is to add the jog forward right in the center at the top so jog forward this one here and we can hold shift to snap it into place now our character is jogging forward then we're going to get a jog right sorry jog forward right which is fr it's just abbreviated then we're going to get strafe right and as you can see the animations are blending depending what speed and direction we're going next we're going to get the back right and snap that in there and then we're just going to get a jog backwards so jog bwr in here like that sweet so we actually are blending between all these animations depending on the speed and the direction which you can see in the preview value hopefully that made sense i know a lot of people don't explain this very well i've done my best and recorded this about 20 times so hopefully you learn a little bit about blend spaces and we're just basically going to do the opposite here so it's going to be um it's going to be forward left strafe left back left and then backwards so let me just drag the last one in and as you can see when we hold control we are blending between all these different animations now this does not represent the final product that we're actually going to be making but for now this is a very good starting point and this builds the foundation that we desperately need but if i was to click play now nothing would work and the reason is this right here it's asking us what is the speed and what is the direction of your character because if we were to just click play now it will just run like on the spot it will stay in the idle because we're never transferring so let's go to the event graph in the animation blueprint and set up some variables 
so the animation blueprint knows what speed and direction we are going. So drag out a try and get pawn owner and we're going to cast to BP shoot a character just like this and hook that up into there. Then we're going to drag out of as BP shooter and rename this something like shooter ref or shoot a character ref. Let's do that instead. Sweet. Now we can actually just position this so it looks a little bit better. Let's just drag this down, highlight it and press Q to align it. And then out of here, we are actually gonna drag out and get the character movement. So scroll all the way to the bottom and get character movement. Pull out of here, promote it to a variable. And then this is going to be our character movement reference. Sweet, let's just plug that into there like that. And then we can just align it all and compile and save and let's actually comment this as well so if we just draw a box around this just like this and press c we can actually comment this so we don't get lost later on down the line now i've just noticed a little bit of a problem which we're going to fix right now so let me just move this to the side so you can see a little bit better and right here it says event blueprint update animation now this is doing it for the tick so every tick will be updating the animation and setting these variables that's not what we want so we're going to disconnect this and drag this down and we're actually going to get what is the equivalent to a begin play node and event blueprint initialize animation so when the animation initializes then it will set these variables. Next, we're gonna get out of the shoot a character ref and convert it to a validated get. So we're checking if the character is valid and then we're gonna get a sequence because we'll be adding a load of different things to this sequence. So I'm gonna do it now. Next, we're gonna get the character movement and out of here, we're gonna get the velocity. Scroll down, get velocity and then drag out of velocity and promote it to a variable. We're going to rename this variable velocity ABP. I always like to abbreviate it with ABP on the animation blueprint so the variable doesn't pop up in other places and confuse me because I get really easily confused. <laughs> Next, we're going to get the vector XY, so the vector length XY, sorry, and then align this. And this is going to be our ground speed. So if we actually just drag out of here, promote it to a variable, then we can rename this ground speed. Whoops. Ground speed ABP. Like that. And then just plug that in just like that. Sweet. Now we have our velocity and our ground speed as a variable in our animation blueprint. Okay, so let's set up the direction. Now, let's drag out of the character move, no, sorry, the shooter character while holding control, and that will get this shooter character. Then we're gonna get the actor rotation, and out of the actor rotation, we need to calculate the direction. Now, this is gonna ask for the velocity of our character. Luckily, we just made that a minute ago. So we can right click, split the struct pin, and then the X and the Y is what we need. So let's right click the velocity as well, split that, and then we're just gonna plug in the X and the Y, just like that. Let's line everything up. And then out of the calculate direction, we can actually drag out and we're gonna promote this to a variable, just like this. So click promote. And then let's rename this direction ABP, like that. And then we're just going to plug this into the second pin on the sequence node, like that. Well, technically the first pin, because in uh, encoding, it always starts with zero and then goes to one. <laughs> right, okay, so I just skipped ahead a bit. And what we've done is just added a few comments so we don't end up getting lost in the animation blueprint. So I've just added a calculate ground speed calculate direction, ticks every frame, and then checks if the character is valid, just like this. Just so when we come back to it later, we don't get confused. 
Okay, so let's put these variables to use. What we're going to do is plug these into the blend space that we created earlier. So drag out from ground speed and direction and just plug these right in here like that. Click compile. Now we're still getting a couple of errors, so this won't work correctly. So let's just click play and see what happens. We're staying in idle. Now this is because we don't have a transition rule. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about this here. This is asking us, when should we transition into the blend space? So when should we go from idle into the strafing locomotion? And when do we want to do that? We actually want to get the ground speed. And if the ground speed is greater than like zero or 0 0.001, then we transition into the other state. Now for now, I'm going to just put this value in here and I'm going to show you what happens if you don't get this value correct. So let's click compile. And now we can transition into the unarmed strafing locomotion. So we'll transfer in, but we're always going to be stuck in this strafing locomotion. So as you can see, we're just like running on the spot and this isn't what we want. And that is because we need to set up the other transition rule back to idle. So what we're going to do is just paste in the nose from before and just change this to less than so if the ground speed is less than 0 0.0001 then we can transfer back and if we click play now we actually are running around and our animations are blending correctly now we do have a little bit of a, a glitch going on and we will add a variable later called should move or should transition which will stop this little like stutter so don't worry about that now what I'm going to do is change our run speed in our character because it is way too fast for the animations that we're using right now. So let's go to the character movement component and we're going to set the walk speed, the max walk speed to 150 and the crouch into 100. Let's have a look and see how this looks. And now we're moving way too slow for the animation. As you can see, the feet are sliding and that's not what we want. So let's change that again. Let's just up the walk speed to let's say 250 and 150 for crouched we'll click play and this looks a little bit better sweet so after some further testing we were still getting some glitches so i just changed the greater and the less than transition rules to a value of one so this one here one and the other one here as one as well now when we click play this should blend a little bit better there we go. That's looking good. Like I said, this is just a foundation setup for this character. We will be changing the animation to make him look incredible later. We'll be adding like crouching and rifle animations and debugging all of these glitchy transitions as well. But right now, this is a good starting point. So we have set up a eight way locomotion system for our character. This one is unarmed. Like I said, we will be adding a eight way locomotion system for rifle, for pistol, for everything in between, even crouching. And we also need to set up our jumping stage. So if you have struggled with anything in this video or anything in any tutorial I've made, go and join the Discord. We just made it a few days ago and we're all here to help each other out. If you want any of the project files, check my Patreon. Like the video if you enjoyed or learned something new and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I will catch you next time.